With that page open now, we want to set up our Illustrator, what I call the perfect page, so that uh, everything is in a place where you can go and get it easily. Most efficient, most functional way to set up your page. Start first with a toolbar. You can click on this dark gray bar across the top and it will let you move it around and put it in different places. It should always be on the left, even if you're left-handed, right-handed, whatever. Put it on the left side so you know you're going to go to your tools on the left and your palettes on the right. Now this little double arrow thing here, you see when I click on that, it will put it, it make the tools all line up in one single column or it'll go in double columns. It's, it's up to you. I prefer the double columns because they're more compact and I can get in and out easier. On the tool kit, there are some boxes that have this little black arrow in the corner, the lower right corner. That means that there are more tools in that box. And these are the tools that are contained. It opens up what's called a tear-off. So if you want to see all of those all at once, you can do that and it'll set up a separate uh, box that you can place around your main toolbox, sort of customizing your work area. And some of these that you really need to open these up often because you use these tools very quickly and, and it saves time to have them showing. If you don't want them anymore, then click on the little red dot and they go away. Now, the, the, the first thing I do when I open this up is uh, not necessarily get my tools arranged, but I need rulers on this. So hit Command key and the R key, and that gives you rulers across the top and on the left side. And then the next thing I do is, um, if you can't see the top of your document here, hit uh, Command uh, command zero, command zero, and that will set your page up so always you can see the top, bottom, in, in whatever screen size you're working with. So the next thing I'm going to do is take where the rulers come together here, there's a little white square. You'll notice that uh, my measurements start at zero and go out to eight and a half, but it's upside down. This It goes from 11 down to one. I like to take my black arrow and click in that uh, click and hold and, and pull it you're holding on your mouse key and pull that crosshair until it touches the upper left corner of the page and when you let go <clears throat> it realigns these arrows so it starts from zero out to the eight and a half and it starts at zero up here and goes down through the inches to 11 and that's easier for the measuring and, and scaling that we'll do as we get uh, working on projects there's another thing that you need to do as you open up your Illustrator uh, document. And on your computer, once you do it once, it'll stay that way. On some computers, though, it goes back to the default, and you have to go back and reset. Uh, this would be to go up into File and come down in, I'm sorry, into Illustrator and come down into Preferences. And there are several preference settings that you do here. They're, what I'm looking at is what says Guides. So with these drop-down menus, you go to Illustrator and you get a drop-down menu, Preferences, and with that little dark arrow, that means there's more in that Preferences. So I slide over here with my cursor and come down to Guides and Grid. Now, the guidelines right now are going to be light blue lines. I'm going to change that, and this Change Arrows here gives you a lot of choices. Pick Light Gray, and under Lines, you have two choices, Lines or Dots, and I'm going to go with Dots. When you've done that, okay that, and I'll show you what you've made here in a second. Another thing I want to do is either right click and where it says high um, lock guides, you're right clicking on your mouse and it says lock guides. There's no check mark there, so by selecting it and letting go, you're going to lock your guides so that they'll stay in place, they won't move around. If your right click doesn't open that up, see that. that check mark there means that it's now checked. It'll go away. I can unlock them if I go back there. And it may be that you'd want to unlock them to move them or you've got too many guides to delete them. But then lock them back up again so that they won't move around on you when you select objects to move. If you can't find that, go to uh, View and come down to Guides. And there is that uh, Lock Guide things again. With a check mark on meaning that they are locked and you do want them locked. Another thing that you might want to try, if, if, it's, if, it, if you have these little things at the end of your 
uh, cursor. It, it gives these little words. You know, that, that's supposed to maybe tell you where you are. I don't like those. If you have that, hit the command key and the U key, and that will take those little informational word things out. All right, to continue with the perfect page, uh, take your black arrow and, you know, select it. It's grayed when it's selected. And click on this left um, ruler. Click and hold, and you're bringing out a guideline. And find the four and a quarter part mark on your um, upper measurement. It depends on the size of the screen you're working with, but make sure it's four and a quarter. And, and let go, and you've got a guideline now right down the middle of the page. You see, it's gray and it's dots, so you can see it, but it's not very obtrusive. It won't be part of the artwork, it won't print, but uh, it will help you line things up, center things on the page. See, I've, my screen is smaller, so I've got zero and two and four and six and eight. So there's one inch, and there's three inch, there's five inches, there's four and a half inches, there's four and a quarter, and that's obviously the half of eight and a half uh, inch page. All right, now this top bar up here where the gray is, where the name was, if you click on that, you can slide it over and put it, I like to put it so it's um, the ruler is just showing, and then you have plenty of room over here to work. I'm going to park my toolbox over here, and there are some tools we use a lot, and we need to have these extras. So where that white arrow is, I'm going to click on that and open it up and come out to with this tear-off bar, and it'll say tear-off bar and let, let go there and it actually makes a new little niche with uh, two tools in it. There are three arrows, a black arrow, a white arrow shown here twice, and a white arrow with a plus. We'll come back and review what those tools are for. Uh, another one that you want to do is this arrow, this tool right here, this rectangle. Click on that and it, it um, offers the tear off and I'm going to just stack that on top. That is preset shapes for rectangles, rectangles with rounded corners, ovals or circles, and polygon, anything from a triangle to whatever size you want, stars, and this flare tool. Let's stop with that, although there, this tool right here, the, the rotate tool, that's another one, the rotate and reflex that I use a lot, and we will see them down the road, so you might want to pull that one out. So you just park your tools over here. Now you can go in there and get tools easily. The other side of the um, uh, screen is for palettes. Now here's the palettes that's set up sort of on default. If you pull this palette out and set it here and, and hit the double arrows, well, hit them once, the, it'll open up and show you the palettes that are there. Now, there's three sets of palette groupings that I want you to be sure that you set up each time. And the reason for that is that it's there's a lot of tools, a lot of palettes. You don't use them all all the time, but some you use a lot. So when you open this up, it, it won't be grouped the way I want you to group them for the perfect page. There are three, area, uh, three uh, palette groupings I want you to do. Let's start with, with color. Here is color there. I'm going to click on the, the little, see, it looks like a, a three by five card with a tab on it. Click on color. It pulls it out and sets it by itself. Color is one. Swatches is here. I'm going to pull that out. And if I slide it in here, see that little blue line that shows up around the interior of the color, that means that swatches is going to slide in right behind it. And whichever one you select comes forward, and that's the one that's going to be active. The last one that goes in here is gradient. I find gradient down here, so I'm going to click on that and pull it over and put it in that uh, slot with a little blue line showing all the way around, meaning it's going to go in behind. And there's the gradient. Now we'll cover these tools later and palettes so that you can see what they're used for. But color swatches gradient is one of those three uh, in, a, in a palette, and we're going to have three palette groupings, so we'll go with that. All right, now the next one is going to be um, uh, the Pathfinder. Pathfinder isn't showing over here, so I'm going to go up to Windows because Windows shows you all of the palettes. And here's Pathfinder down here, so I'm going to select Pathfinder. And... It shows up with some other guys I don't need, so I'm going to pull Pathfinder out by itself and transform in a line I'm going to send back to the back so we don't see them anymore. With Pathfinder, Transparency, which is right here, and I'm going to pull it out and set it behind, and there it sits, Transparency. And the, the last one in Pathfinder group is Layers. And layers, let's see, do we have that open? I don't see, yeah, here it is down here at the very bottom. So I'm going to grab layers and pull it up and put it in that grouping. 
If it doesn't go, try it again. Sometimes it bounces up and gets on top. There it is. So Pathfinders, Transparency and Layers is my other, my second palette group. The third one has to do with type, and it isn't showing here, so I have to go to Window, and I want what's called Type. And under type, I want character. Now, this is for fonts. You know, fonts, character, type, they all sort of mean the same thing. I want that character tab. And it shows up up here, and it has with it paragraph. I want that one. I don't need this open type, so I'll get rid of that. Behind that, I want the stroke. Here's stroke right here. I'm going to put stroke in there. And notice that these this, there's three little lines here on a lot of these guys if you open those up it'll say show options or hide options you want the options showing because it says hide that means it's going to take away this bottom group i don't want the bottom group to go away i want the i want to have show options and so several of these will have that show options tab okay now the rest of these guys here are grouped together and i don't need any of these guys right now they virtually are tied together you can take the the uh, gray bar and pull them out and ungroup them even though they're like together in twos or because if you get them close to each other they'll sort of snap into each other and they'll be connected I don't need these guys I don't need these guys and so I put my groups here Pathfinder across the top color in the middle and the character grouping across the bottom now if you want to open up your your uh, illustrator thing a little more you can come down here in the very corner here there's a little triangular formation of dots if you click on that and hold it you can enlarge the white space it's not going to change the element of uh, of this eight and a half by eleven artboard as a matter of fact if you put your finger on the with this black arrow showing or any of most of the tools if you put your finger on the space bar it turns into a hand and you can slide this around and i, I recommend you do this so you're parking don't go all the way to the corner here or it'll jam park itself there. Put your pallets here, and, and they're not very close to each other, so they join together. Just park them over here. And then with your space bar down, you can move this so it's semi-centered. And now you have your tools on the left and your pallets, the major pallet groupings on the right. Uh, a page ready to go with a center dot down the center, and, and you know, these guidelines can be used for margins and for measuring. We'll see that coming. But this is the creation of the perfect page. Remember, you've gone to preferences and units. I'm sorry, and guides, and you've, you've set it at light gray and dots. And you've also made sure that uh, under view, your guides are locked. And uh, the little check mark means they are locked. If I checked on that now, it would be unlocked because the guide will go, go away. So if you click on your guys here, you can't get them to move. Okay, that's creating the perfect page. And we'll start at this point with every project. Every new project goes back to the perfect page because I want to get you in, um, wired in to having the, the best tools and the best palettes that work the best up and running. If perchance you need another palette, it's easy to find. Go get Windows and say, show me um, brushes. And brushes will show up along with a few other of his friends. But here's brushes. You can pull him out and, and use him as needed or any of the others. We're not using them right now. So... Or you can click on them, they'll go away. So they're there to find, but you don't need to clutter up your screen. The perfect Illustrator page. Do it every time and be consistent, and it'll make your work go faster.